Hi everyone, my name is Marcus and you're watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. Today we're going to cover a topic that I'm pretty passionate about and that's using algae to control algae in your tank. So why would you want to grow algae? If you create an environment in your tank, a utopia for algae, it will grow there obviously. In growing, it consumes the available nutrients from your water, uh, things that algae likes to eat. Um, that is ammonia, nitrate, phosphate and certain heavy metals like copper, aluminium and iron. All of these are generally considered bad for our tanks, uh, especially at high levels. And for many reefers, keeping those types of things, particularly nitrate and phosphate, low uh, is difficult or only achieved through constant water changes or lots of products and consumable medias. So what's achieved by growing algae in this utopia that we're going to create? As you have created an environment that is so amazing for algae to grow in, it grows there very effectively, much more effectively than anywhere else in your tank, and therefore as a result it outcompetes the algae in your display, where the conditions are now less optimal than in this utopia that we've created. As a result, the algae in the display withers away and dies. Also, as a byproduct of growing so much algae in this utopia, your water becomes pristine as all the ammonia, nitrate and phosphate has been consumed uh, and will be at very low levels. But the benefits don't even stop there. Growing algae raises tank pH, raises tank oxygenation, lowers CO2 in the tank, releases amino acids into the water column, that's basically coral food, provides a haven for many beneficial creatures like copepods and amphipods, and lastly, organic molecules are put back into the water. That's carbohydrates, vitamins, proteins, enzymes, lipids, and amino acids. Algae growth is naturally self-limiting. So unlike chemical nutrient removal methods, which have the possibility of completely stripping your water of a particular nutrient entirely, algae will simply stop growing or adjust to grow at a slower rate once a low threshold has been reached. This can also be easily tuned by turning up or down the length of the photo period of the light that you're going to use to grow the algae. It is also most common for this natural low threshold that many tanks reach and settle in to be the perfect range where we want it to be for growing our coral. That is around the one to two parts per million nitrate and the 0.03 to 0.05 range for phosphate. This does differ from tank to tank and can be adjusted slightly by your photo period and the effectiveness of how you're growing the algae. But in general, it aligns pretty well and your corals will generally adapt to that level of stability. It should be obvious that the list of pros that I've gone through here is quite extensive. You want to grow algae in your tank or specifically in a dedicated controlled part of your tank like a sump or a piece of equipment in your sump, not in the display. So how do we do this? How do we create this utopia for algae that's not our display? Well, there's three major ways to achieve it. The first and the simplest is a refugium. This is just a section of your sump you walled off and put a grow light over. These lights range from cheap grow lights from Bunnings or eBay to advanced and specialized lights uh, from brands like Kessel or Aqua Illumination. In this area of your sump, you'll likely be growing Catomorpha or Cato. And yes, that is the correct pronunciation. It's Cato, not Cheeto. However, it is possible to grow other macro algae as well. Refugiums are cheap and quick to set up. However, they do require a comparatively large amount of space to be effective. And that can make it also difficult to keep your sump clean because by their nature, they become detritus traps and the light spill off can generally cause algae to grow outside of the walled area such as on the sides of your skimmers and other reactors and things you might have in your sump which can be undesirable and add to the maintenance. The second way to grow algae to fight algae is with an algae reactor. This is like a refugium but supercharged and condensed. By squeezing the algae into a reactor with higher flow and specialized lighting the effectiveness of the macro algae gets amplified. There's also the advantages of taking up far less space and allowing you to keep a very clean sump. It does require its own dedicated pump and you'll need to consider how exactly that's going to be plumbed into your system. The third way and the method I'll be focusing on for this video is called an algae turf scrubber or an ATS. The difference to the other methods is that instead of growing macro algae like catamorpha, it grows green hair algae or turf algae on a mesh screen. There are a few advantages to this approach. It's self-seeding, green hair algae will start growing on your ATS magically. There's no need to acquire some like you would need to do with Catamorpha. 
Green hair algae by weight is far more effective than Kato, meaning it will pull more nutrients out of the water in less time. Green hair algae is a very simple organism with a simple molecular or cellular structure. It forms extremely thin strands, thousands of them, which increase the available surface area and contact time with the water. Kato forms more complex, firm structures and uh, the strands are approximately one millimetre in diameter. This can cause Kato to become self-shading due to its thicker structure. Green hair algae does also suffer from this to an extent, however the effect is far less pronounced due to the strands not being rigid and being semi-translucent. In a study by the National Environmental Research Institute of Denmark, they showed that Kato productivity drops by 72% with just two centimetres of thickness. So that's why refugiums rely on having such a huge surface area and why algae reactors lose their productivity and effectiveness once they become full. An algae turf scrubber can be added to a tank while it's cycling. It may just take a bit longer for it to get fully seeded. Kato based reactors and refugiums often crash while tanks are cycling and for those I would wait until the tank is at least three months old to just save yourself some headaches. It's a very common myth that I've heard people state when regarding algae turf scrubbers and algae reactors is that they are not as effective at harboring copepods as a refugium. This is simply not true. Most people are confusing amphipods with copepods. The larger two to four millimeter critters you can see with your naked eye, those are not copepods, those are amphipods. Copepods are extremely difficult to see under most circumstances and with the eye and they are much smaller. It is true that a refugium is better for amphipods, however copepods are what mandarins eat. It's also a good food source for coral. Your reactor or scrubber will be filled with millions and millions of microscopic copepods which constantly enter the water column and propagate your whole tank just as effectively as a refugium. However, there are some cons with green hair algae. It needs to be harvested more frequently because when it does overgrow to the point of shading itself, the underneath will begin to die and detach from the screen. At this point, you'll have bits of green hair algae floating around your tank, not particularly desirable. Typically, this begins to occur after the two to three week mark. However, in most algae turf scrubbers for optimal performance, harvesting should be every seven to 14 days. A Kato reactor can go much longer without harvesting, and whilst their effect effectiveness and efficiency will dramatically decrease over time, once the algae reactor is full, it won't release any Kato into your display. The profile of most ATSs is also less standard than a typical cylinder or reactor style piece of equipment uh, that many of us use, and for that reason, more planning might also be required to integrate one into your sump. That brings me to my particular algae turf scrubber, the RAIN 2 by Santa Monica. This unit is well designed, easy to plumb into your tank. In fact, I run mine off a split in my overflow so it doesn't even need a pump. Here's how it works. Water comes down my overflow and splits into two paths. One into a filter sock with carbon and then the other one into the base of the rain too where it fills the unit and is forced to run down a screen like a waterfall, making this a waterfall style algae turf scrubber. This style has proven itself over the last four to five years since it was first introduced to the market as a very effective design. Whether you buy a product like the RAIN 2 or DIY your own, almost everyone uses this design now. The effect of water running over a screen like a waterfall is to create a turbulent air water interface over a rough surface. This is then blasted from both sides by waterproof LEDs which are tuned to a specific red spectrum for optimally growing the algae. In short, it's a green hair algae utopia. It generally takes between two to three weeks for a brand new ATS to become seeded and start growing green hair algae or turf algae like this. If, you, if your tank is still cycling or very new, that time might be longer. However, it's usually fine as the bio load of a new tank is generally low. Once established, an ATS should be harvested every seven to 14 days. And this will depend again on the bio load of your tank and how quickly the algae grows. Harvesting from the RAIN 2 is super easy. First you lift off the hood, then you lift out the entire unit. The base which is plumbed directly into my weir remains in the sump. Everything is snugly push fit together and removal and reassembly is very easy. Over by the sink, I remove the red cap, pull out the screen from its slot, remove the pipe from its base, and from there everything can be easily scrubbed and cleaned. 
I've found that the best way to clean the screen is with a teaspoon. You don't want to scrub it so that it's pristine clean. You just want to remove 80 to 90% of the bulk, leaving a bit behind to seed the next cycle. Reassembly is just as easily done and the whole unit is placed back in the sump. I've run the Rain 2 on my tank for well over a year now and I'm still on my first screen. It will likely need a replacement over the next three to six months as they, the screens don't last forever, but it is a very cheap part and easy to buy. Since running the Rain 2, my nitrates have never once in my tank been above two parts per million and they average one part per million. I run the lights on my Rain 2 for 16 hours starting in the evening and turning off in the mid morning and my phosphates for the longest time were around 0.03 to 0.05 However, due to my recent drastically increased feeding patterns, specifically with coral food, they did start to creep up a little bit to about 0.06 to 0.07, which was a bit high for my liking, uh, as I do plan to keep predominantly SPS for the long run. So as you might have seen in one of my previous videos, I did set up a phosphate resin reactor to supplement my phosphate removal just a bit. And I run that reactor only on a timer for seven hours a day. So the majority of my phosphate removal is still handed by the RAIN-2. But in conjunction, they're now keeping my phosphate stable at 0.03 to 0.04. Because I added the RAIN-2 shortly after I cycled my tank, back when it only had two clownfish and basically no coral, it's essentially been on my tank since the rock was pristine and still looked like it did when it was dry. I've never had, for the entire life of my tank, ever, any significant algae growth on my rock work, and I attribute this entirely to the rain too. I consider an algae reactor, scrubber, or suitably large refugium a more essential component to a reef tank than a skimmer. In fact, all the manufacturers of the scrubbers on the market make strong claims that skimmers are not necessary in a tank with an effective algae scrubber, and I totally agree with them on that. If my skimmer broke tomorrow, I wouldn't replace it, and I really am just running it because I own it. I find myself turning my skimmer off all the time. I am paranoid about it simply removing the coral foods that I add to my tank, and I'm not convinced that it plays any significant role in my tank given the effectiveness of the ATS. It should be noted that the photosynthesis of algae is as effective if not more effective at oxygenating water than the air-water interface inside a skimmer. That's another myth that skimmers are the only way to promote good oxygenation of your water. Photosynthesis is more effective and can actually supersaturate water with oxygen. Based on the success that I've had with an ATS from the beginning, I would never run a tank without one in the future. I would possibly try an algae reactor. However, the success I've had with the scrubber style growing green hair algae has been so good that I see little reason to experiment here. I hope you found this review helpful. Please remember to like and subscribe. My name is Marcus and you've been watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. Bye for now.